Dzień dobry. And that's it for, for Polish, yeah. If I worked harder, I would be fluent, but I didn't actually, so sorry. <laughs> but maybe in a few days, I will just remind all my Polish words and I'll be able to speak in Polish. So hello, anyway. Thank you for uh, inviting me, Frank. Thank you for having me here. I should tell you something about circus education, but <laughs> I would like to tell you more about circus education in Czech Republic. Uh, I would like to ask you, what do you think? What was first, circus or circus school? <laughs> you know, like hen or the egg. Well, anyway, the answer is not important. What is important for me, I don't know how about for you, that we found that to involve, evolve or develop a new art form, we need professional training, professional, professional schools. Well, in France, they say that Contemporary circus started, or new circus started in France. Well, I agree, <laughs> you don't have to. And I think, I would say that contemporary circus, or new circus, up to you, started also with schools, modern schools that were founded. And in France, if you go back to 70s, there were two schools, Académie Fratellini, that still exists, and Ecole au Carré, which doesn't exist anymore. And those schools were very important because new ideas, new people from different social environment came to circus school to train. They brought new artistic ideas. So the contemporary circus, as we call it today, let's agree we will call it contemporary circus because in Czech Republic we use new and it could be confusing for some people. So contemporary circus had a chance to evolve. And today, it's 2014. 40 years, I would say. And what schools we have today, thousands of schools, I would say, in the whole world. I put some of those uh, in my presentation to go through the European countries, but not only European, but also Canada and Australia. And I would say that those schools are different. They have different system of education, different status, different groups of age, but they have something in common. They try to meet. They try to meet, I don't know how often a year, but there is a very important organization called FEDEC, Fédération Européenne des Écoles de Cirque, uh, des Écoles Professionnelles de Cirque, European Organization or Federation for Professional Circus Schools. And those schools, they meet, the representatives, they meet, they try to exchange their ideas, they try to evolve new methodologies for the education, professional circus education. I would like to give you one example of professional circus school because I had this chance to go to Montreal, to Canada, Quebec. It's more Quebec than Canada, we must be careful. They are very you know, sensitive about it. So I had the chance to spend five months in Canada, Ecole Nationale de Cirque Montréal. I was very glad because it was an amazing experience to spend some time in, let's say, the only professional national huge circus school in Montreal, which is great, nice building, amazing equipment, very good students, high quality of the circus artistics. And I will tell you a little bit more about this school. This school was founded in 1981 by uh, Guy Caron and Pierre Leclerc. And those two guys, they were inspired by European schools in Moscow which is traditional state circus school founded in 1927, and by the circus school in Budapest. But since 1981 and during 80s, when they succeeded to get really the accreditation from the government, they totally evolved till today, 2014, when they divided their education in three different levels. Préparatoire, so pr preparation for kids from 9 till 13, then études secondaires, secondary, which is, I would say, like artistic high school. So it's like a re regular education on high school with mathematics, science, languages, but also artistic disciplines. And then the third, collegial, which is for, I would say, adults or older students already experienced. And it's a three year study, and after that they get diplomas. They get two different, DEC and DEE, which is for foreigners. This first one is only for Canadian, Canadians and French students. <laughs> so this is professional circus school, national circus school, recognized by the government with the accreditation. So those people, those graduates, when they leave the school, they are professionals. Uh, in circus, they work in circus, they work all over the world, not only in Cirque du Soleil, which is 
the close one because it's just around the corner from Ecole Nationale de Cirque. So those are the professionals. And now I will show you the situation in Czech Republic. Well, first Czechoslovakia, which is over. But <laughs> in Czechoslovakia in the 50s and 60s, we had circus school. We had professional circus school. Because in 50s and 60s, traditional circus, as we call it now, in those times they call it a circus, uh, the Czech circus, Czechoslovakian circus, was really on the top. Also because of the uh, Russian artists we had in our circuses and the Russian circus school we had. And then uh, during 70s, 80s, it was over. No more schools, no more good artists. It was the crisis. And then in New Millennium, there was this idea, this energy to start working with circus techniques again. But we still don't have any professional circus school in Czech Republic yet. Because there's still this will to found one, to create one, and we still try to find a way how to do it. Because it's not easy at all with the Ministry of Education to really get the accreditation. First, we wanted to create professional circus school, professional circus training at the University uh, Academy of Performing Arts in Prague. It didn't work very, very well, so we, we decided to go lower. It means lower level, which means high schools. S high schools that are concentrated on sport. So the new idea is to create professional circus school, circus training on a high school that is focused on a sport education. So at the moment in Czech Republic, you have few organizations, few centers that concentrate, focus on um, youth circus or circus <laughs> as a leisure activity for teenagers, adults, and professionals. But I will specify later what means professional in Czech Republic, circus professional in Czech Republic. 2005, Cir Circus Le Grando. It's an organization that organizes courses for lessons, circus lessons for kids, for teenagers, so it's more like a youth, cir youth circus training. But they also have adult visitors, and those lessons go from <coughs> Monday till Friday evenings. They have all kinds of disciplines, rope walking, juggling, aerial hoop, ropes, vertical ropes, silks, so all these kind of disciplines. They also have their own space. Circus Le Grando is the only one that has their own chapiteau tent. So they also do some performances, festivals, they also do workshops and international exchanges with organizations, same organizations, for example, in Germany, Switzerland, and, and so on. 2010, Circion, Center for Contemporary Circus, which I represent here, uh, opened the, their three first courses for kids and adults. It was 2010. Today we are 2014, and in September we are going to open 35 new courses. So here you can see really the, the change, the progress, and we are very happy for that, because in four years, which I would call the huge boom of contemporary circus in Czech Republic, uh, people understand it now as a regular part of their lives before they just send their kids to learn to play music instrument, drama school, sport. Now they also send kids to circus school as a, as a good activity to really evolve the personality of, of the kid. So we do, let's, just, let's say the same thing as Circus Le Grando. We do trainings for, for kids, for teenagers, also for adults as a leisure activity, but we also provide workshops and courses for professionals because there are already <laughs> companies, contemporary circus companies in Czech Republic. So we try to invite professionals from foreign countries, from France, from UK, from Sweden, so they can give lessons to Czech professionals, which usually come from the sport environment or theater environment. And I would really say that the contemporary circus in Czech Republic is strongly connected to theater, and I will tell you later why. Uh, Culture House Mlane, it's nearly the same as Cirqueon and Le Grando, also lessons for kids, adults, teenagers, workshops for professionals. They have also their own space. Those three organizations, they have their own space, own equipment. They 
provide different lessons from aerial acrobatics, tail juggling, clownery, and also physical theater. Because for us, is, if we talk about contemporary circus, there also have to be this part of theater and thinking in a creative way, thinking about circus in a creative way. Uh, we also do international projects. We cooperate on international projects. There's a project Grundweg. There are a few different projects. Educircation, which is the international cooperation for circus teachers, lecturers also, uh, also sorry. <laughs> social educircation is for teachers who are focused on a social circus, which is also a big issue in Czech Republic now. We also created a huge network in Czech Republic and Slovak Republic between people who are focused on a social circus and also youth in action. It's more about exchanges for teachers who are focused on youth circus. And now this theater issue about contemporary circus in Czech Republic. There are theater schools, drama schools, academies, universities in Czech Republic that pro uh, provide some, let's say, some kind of circus training, because what we say in Czech Republic, every actor, even puppeteer, must know the basics of acrobatics. But what happened later, after 2009, 2010, they tried to force those acrobatic lessons to give better base of acrobatics to actors, dancers, also puppeteers. And this department of alternative and puppet theater uh, I mentioned through uh, three different companies. Those are the graduates, Petr Forman, Pavel Šťourač, Rostislav Novák. Those are the graduates of the department. And all of them are connected to circus somehow. Somehow. So, they, for example, Rostislav Novák created the contemporary circus company Cirkla Putika. And he's the graduate of the department of alternative and puppet theater. So that's why I said that Czech circus, contemporary circus, is strongly connected to the theater and theater schools. There is also a department of pantomime, so physical theater. It was founded by Stibor Turba, amazing clown, amazing mim, who taught also at CNAC, uh, Centre National des Arts du Cirque in Chalon en Champagne. He also created studio Kaple v Nečtinách, then theater Alfred Vedvore, and in those spaces, they presented contemporary circus or theater with circus inside. And then Eliška Bertnicka, she is the graduate of the department of pantomime, and she graduated with her performance, contemporary circus performance. Now she became professional circus artist and teacher. And the third school is uh, Academy of Performing Arts in Brno. <laughs> Uh, there's the Department of Physical Theater, and uh, it was also founded by Stibor Turba. Piernado is the teacher now, and we have also one graduate you may know, which is Marta Kuczynska. <laughs> so you may see <laughs> our schools produce uh, circus artists, but I wouldn't say that these schools are circus schools. They just give some basics. They give the possibilities, I hope so, Marta, you can correct me. I don't know how about in Brno. In Prague, they at least try. Uh, so that's about theater, Czech theater schools and their relationship with circus. And what I would like to also tell you is that these, this Cirkeon, this Culture House Lane, this Circus Le Grando, they already produce new circus generation in Czech Republic. For example, Cirkeon, these four guys, or three guys and one girl, those are the, let's say, graduates of our lessons and courses, and they created their own company now. All of them, they are teenagers, they are about, they are 18, and they started to perform, and they win at the competitions, theater competitions, or competitions for amateurs, uh, who do physical theater. And we are very glad that also these guys who started doing circus four years ago are able to perform now. The other one, Circus Tete, do, two girls who do aerial acrobatics. They started with circus in 2009, 2010, and now they already perform. And they can earn money on it. So they are not that bad. And the third one, those graduates, also graduates of Cirkeon, they started to perform a few months ago. They started with Circus 2010, and in a four years active training, they perform on themselves. 
yeah, Marta told me that it would be nice if I also mentioned the research. Yeah, there's also a huge issue about research and publishing about circus. There's just one book in Czech about contemporary circus. I wouldn't say it's that good, so I still think there's a huge lag and we should fill this big gap by new publishing about contemporary circus in Czech Republic. But there are master theses, PhD theses, bachelor theses that are being written about contemporary circus. I'm writing one of them. We try to provide some courses for young writers, journalists who would like to write about contemporary circus. And we write studies, publish articles. So we think that publishing and research also part of contemporary circus and its development. And I would like to finish here. I talk too much, so I think it's enough. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, I'm here till Sunday. <laughs> Dziękujemy bardzo Weronice, a teraz y, mamy 15 minut na dyskusję. Zapraszam do zadawania pytań.